usually you'd expect the sixth team in the league as well to have a positive points difference. Usually the top six have positive points difference and the bottom six have negative points difference. That's normally how it works out, isn't it? Yeah. Usually it, uh, the people in the middle of the table win half the games and lose half the games. Again, norm normally. Um, Hull KR have actually won half the games and in sixth place, but they've all got negative points difference from Hull KR down. Yeah, and actually, I think before um, before Rovers game on Sunday, even they had a negative points difference. They, no, they do still now after that oh, game. Oh right. Once... <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, so uh, I kind of think there's. Hull FC need to make more... sure they don't slip into that battle for the playoff places and do like the platform that their pack set is able to be maintained, is able to be capitalised on, especially if Jake Connor's going to miss some games. But, yeah. um, you know, it's good. It, it, we're at a good point after 14 rounds. We've got 13 rounds left to kind of weigh things up from that point of view. So it's a good time for Mark to get that, that point in. And I think it is fair to include Huddersfield in you know, in 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 the top four conversation, and say they're deservedly there at this stage of the season without any question. Yeah, I mean, I think at the moment you would be surprised if any of those top four weren't in the playoffs at the end of the season. Uh, yeah, and I I think it'd be very much Hull FC for them not to be as in there, but it would be a huge disappointment if they weren't. But it, as well, so it'd I. Be the I most- FC thing to do. Yeah, it would be the FC thing to do, unfortunately. For That's you. why I said the top four and not the top five. <laughs> but but I do think they are clearly better than the teams below them. Um, from what I've seen of, of all those sides this year, uh, yeah, I I really can't get a handle on Castleford this year. I really can't get a handle on Salford this year, and. Leeds was just starting to see something different from Leeds now, aren't we? Really, the last month they picked up all of their points pretty much in the last month, and Warrington are just in a in a hole. Yeah, feels like they're just hitting a bit of free fall, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Um, stat line of the week I pulled out Ash Hanley because he had the biggest numbers two tries 224 metres two clean breaks Um, although yeah mate had good tackle numbers didn't he in your game it's just he go for a winning player rather than a losing player usually for stat lines Um, what about player of the week who was your player of the week Um, although he didn't make any of the stats and we barely even spoke about... Well, we didn't speak about him. Um, Mason Lena was the winning player for Wakefield. Um, I just think he's a very good player on his day. Yeah, he, he's, he's, got a, he's a great kicker. Um... He just controlled it. And the reason that Miller was able to be calm, cool and collected taking that... Um, drop goal was because nobody thought it was going to go well no jack brown thought it was going to go to him but wasn't fast enough to do anything about it um but everyone else went charging in at lena ah the old decoy yeah because you expect everything to go through lena don't you yeah um player of the week cruise leaming for me yeah Uh, i thought he was outstanding and you know it it's his first year as the captain it's been a tough start to that that yeah Time's a captain um i thought and, and also every time Leeds don't win he gets crit not he gets criticized so much as the ev- all the fans are like why is brad dwyer not on because he's so exciting but he's not on because cruz leeming is a better player yeah he might not be as good a player for 10 minutes of a game but for a, a whole game he is a better player and i'm uh, you know i'm and i'm pleased for his performance um this week i thought it was very really, really good uh, yeah. predictions i was not really good i went one out of six the only game i got right as well was bottom against top against bottom so <laughs> i don't even get credit for that do i really no i should say i went not out of five with the gimme uh alan went two out of six so not much better and in the host super brew david stays top I'm second, although I had the spoon. You had the cap, so you must have been better than me. I, yeah, 
I don't quite know how I managed You must have that. just had a closer margin on the one you got right. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Uh, you stay third, Alan stays fourth. In the main Super Rue, Rich Owen stays at the top. Mark Wilkinson has the yellow cap this week after obviously back in his Huddersfield side when no one else was. He's rose, risen 20 places as well this week, so good week right. for him. Um, in the Fantasy League, Alan Bagley stays top. Paige Barr had the best weekly score, though, with a really impressive 7-2-7. There was well, a, w- only one other 700-plus score in our competition this week. So, um, uh, sorry, I apologise. I can't remember who the other person was, but well done, Paige, for having the top score. And thanks, everyone, for getting their fan views in on all of the games this week. Please make sure you do it again next week and then some. Right, uh, that is Super League covered. Let's move on to other results. Uh, So in other results, it was round three of the Women's Super League and in group one it finished York 24, Leeds 10. Dr Bob Phillips said, a stodgy Leeds team stuck to an uninspired game plan that was rounded frequently by a sparkling Tara Stanley and occasionally by some of the York's, York City Knights players to trounce the Rhinos. We'd love to know why the sending off, what the sending off was for at half time, and if you can find a ref, and if you can find a referee for not having their complement of cards. <laughs> well, Joshua realised he had lost his red card the other day, so we had to hastily make a new one. So you know, there's always options, Doctor Bob. Yeah. Arts and crafts. Yep. Um, it also finished Huddersfield 18, Wigan 30. And in Group 2, it finished Wakefield 10, Bradford 28, Featherston 0, Warrington 48, and Barrow 40, Lee Minor Rangers 6. Yeah, in uh, news related to the Women's Super League, uh, the international break comes up next week and we know the squads that England and Wales will be picking from for their match in Wales on um, is it Saturday or Sunday? Saturday? Sunday? I've got it written down somewhere Uh, on Sunday so um, we'll mention those squads now uh, and pick out any debutantes along the way so England will be picking from Caroline Colley from the Bedford Tigers she's a potential debutant Bethan Oates from Huddersfield Giants another potential debutant Daniel Anderson Kira Bennett Frank Goldthorpe, Georgia Roach and Courtney Winfield Hill, the headline potential debutant, the uh, the Aussie convert. They're all from the Leeds Rhinos. Then Leah Burke, Jody Cunningham, Amy Hardcastle, Zoe Harris, who's a potential debutant, Shona Hoyle, Emily Rudge, Paige Travis and Vicky Whitfield. They're all from St. Helens. Georgia Wilson makes it from Wigan. Holly Dodd, Gracefield, Tara Stanley and Olivia Wood, who's, an, who's the final potential England debut. They're all from York. For Wales... Potential debutants for Katie Carr and Rosie Carr. I don't know if they're related. Uh, Fifian Jones, Sarah Jones and Ellery Michael. They're all from the Bridge End Blue Bulls or, and also play for the Cardiff Demons in the Super League South. Uh, Bethan Dainton from British Army. She might make her first Welsh cap. Lauren Aitken, Leanne Burnell, Seren Goff Walters, Charlie Mundy, Ree Parker, Brittany Price and Amber Rook are all players who play for the Cardiff Blue Dragons and the Cardiff Demons, um, Emily Hughes and Catherine Salter from the London Bronco- Broncos, Br- Bryony King and Molly Raiden, both from the Honda Outlaws and also the Cardiff Demons, then Fern Davies, who might make her debut, she's from the Warrington Wolves, and finally Karis Marsh of the Wigan Warriors, who's one of the stars of that Welsh uh, lineup. So, um, yeah, they're the squads. I mean, England way, way stronger on paper, of course, but interesting that former. Aussie international cricketer um, Courtney Hill and uh, Caroline Colley, who's the, the the football convert who we talked about earlier in the season, both getting their chances to impress for England. It looks like. Mm. Yeah, good to see some good squads there. Um, moving on to the championship, it was round thirteen and it finished Halifax sixty six, Dewsbury nil, Workington thirty two, London Broncos eighteen. Carsten said, when Lovell had to leave the field, the Broncos were shot. Duran had Doran had free reign and London's offence was as creative as the German offence in 1917. Great win for town and Doran shows that he, that a little belly stops no one. Yeah, he is a tubby little boy, isn't he, Jamie, uh, Jamie Doran? But um, the Will Lovell injury, really serious, wasn't it? Broken neck. Sorry, yeah. 
Uh, Barra 28, Lee 30. Newcastle 10, Featherstone 46. Um, Witness 6, Bradford 34. Pop the Vikings said another poor performance. Another poor performance from the Vikings, lacking ideas and attack. Never really looked like scoring. Some tough matches to come this month for the Vikings with the London game a must win. Uh, it was also Sheffield fourteen, York thirty four, and Whitehaven six, Batley. Oh, I didn't write down what Batley score was. Everyone, that's why Sarah's pausing there. Uh, shall we find out? <laughs> When was this game played Thursday? Uh, Batley 46. Moving on. Hold on, that is same poor connection. The championship. Barrow 44, Witness 4. Batley 46, Workington 0. Dewsbury 18, Whitehaven 26. Lee 36, Halifax. Newcastle 18, Sheffield 31. York 36, London Broncos 34, Feathers 58 and Bradford 12. Yeah, much different stuff from, from London there, but not able to win. Newcastle lost both their games there, both against teams that are, well, Featherstone are a lot better than them, but Sheffield in and around them. You know, we're talking about Warrington being so bad in Super League. Newcastle are a full-time squad. I know they're not a full-time squad littered with big star names like some of the other teams at the top of the championship, but still, that's not a great outing so far this season from Newcastle. Championship standings and Featherstone stay top on 27 points with Lee second on 26 points. York are third on 22 points and Batley are on 19. Halifax are on 18 and Barrow are on 14. Sheffield and Bradford on Oh, I don't know if I've got this right, but Sheffield and Bradford on 14 points round out the top eight. Witness and Newcastle both have 10 points. Whitehaven have eight. Dewsbury have four. London have three. And Workington are off the mark after that win on last Thursday. They're on two points. Uh, championship news in its coaching news. We'll start with the departure first. Dewsbury Rams have parted ways with head coach Lee Greenwood. Greenwood took over the position of head coach at the end of 2018 and took charge of 64 league and cup games, winning 23 that's, it, it's not. It's an okay record for a team that aren't expecting to be competitive, but you know they're, they're going to be looking over the shoulders, aren't we? We just said they're only one point ahead of London and now only two points ahead of Workington. So can you you can kind of understand Jewsby looking elsewhere, can you? Yeah, I mean, like you say, it's not it's not um, a terrible record, but yeah. Not in a division where there's clubs spending vastly more than than you spend as a club, but yeah, it's not. It is a precarious position for them in in that bottom three. Yeah, you don't want to end up any lower down, do you? No. Um, one of the vacancies in the championship, though, has been filled. John Keir has been appointed the boss of Witness Vikings, succeeding Simon Finnegan, the 67-year-old who is also the Wales boss. Um, only left. Bradford in April after four years in charge at Odsall and he's going to take up the post at Widner starting from the 1st of July so he's got a few weeks off still before he starts to roll but kind of do you remember when Bradford sacked Kia and then Widner sacked Finnegan the next day and yeah. it, at the time I sort of thought I wonder if they'll be talking to Kia and yeah. I think we talked about it on the show because the, the Finnegan news came through as we were recording, I think, that, that week. Yeah. It it seemed inevitable, and, and but it's taken a, a month or so to be um, to be rubber-stamped, or two months to be rubber-stamped. But, yeah, um, good appointment yeah, for like, Witness? I, I think John Keir's a good appointment sort of wherever he is, so, yeah. Yeah, he's so experienced and there's not there's not many situations that he can walk into at a club and not have had experience of that situation before and yeah. kind of be reassuring around the place because of that. Yeah, he's got a reputation, hasn't he? You know, as sort of as, as a guy that knows what he's talking about and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think... Um, all in all, everyone thinks that's a positive appointment for Witness. I'm sure we'll hear Paul's take on it uh, maybe for next week's show, our resident Witness fan. But anyone else want to get in touch with their views, we'll, we'll welcome them. Um, OK, let's move on to League One's era. 
Yep. So uh, League One uh, results. It was round ten, and it finished.